Dear friends, our first reading today is indeed a good news for the African Union. It is talking about the evangelization of an Ethiopian eunuch. And this is a good news because it refutes the thesis that if we today, as Africans, we are in the church, it is just an accident of history in the sense that it is as a result of uh, European colonization. So as they came to colonize us, so they also colonized us religiously. So it is an accident of history. That is what some people think. But today, you have a clear refutation of that way of seeing things. Jesus, on Ascension Day, he gave to his disciples a mandate to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Yesterday, we saw with Philip how Samaria was evangelized. And today, with the evangelization of the Ethiopian, it is also the beginning of the evangelization of the ends of the earth. Because in Jesus' time, in the mentality of the Jews, and actually in the Bible, Ethiopia is considered as the remotest corner of the earth. So that mandate Jesus gave to his apostles, St. Luke is telling us is being fulfilled with the evangelization of the Ethiopian. So you see, we as Africans, we are part and parcel of God's project of salvation. So it is not, I repeat, as a result of European imperialism or colonialism that we are Christians. God willed it from the beginning. And you see how really the resurrection brings a new world order, the real world order. Yesterday we saw how Jews and Samaritans, they come together confessing the same faith in Christ Jesus and there was great rejoicing in the Samaritan city evangelized by Philip. Now we see today that there is no bad prejudices against an African, against a black man. The initiative comes from God. The angel of the Lord tells Philip to go down, south down, the road leading to Egypt. And as Philip approaches, the chariot of the Ethiopian, he said, the Holy Spirit told him, go and meet this man. And you see, there is nothing like racism. There is nothing like, oh, this man is a black man and this is a Jew. No way. So this is really the revolution of love Christ has brought in his life, death and resurrection. And uh, let us try to go further into the text. The man is presented as an Ethiopian. Right? Ethiopia, it is uh, the land south of Egypt. So at least they know the beginning, but where it ends, well, the borders are not, the south, the southern borders are not very clear. But it is clear that it's a land south of Egypt. The man is presented as a wealthy man. He's a rich man. Right? He is on the chariot. He has people who are accompanying him. And he, he was the chief treasurer. Today we might say the minister of finance. Of who? Of a Kandake. Of a Kandas. Kandake or Kandas is a title. A title bought by queens in the kingdom of Kush, or the biblical Ethiopia, Meroe, in today's Sudan. So Meroe is in Sudan. 
And at that time, they had women who were queens, not wives of kings, but women who were kings, who were, who were queens. So you see, people are talking today of the emancipation of women as if in Africa, women were always from the beginning of creation to today in lower positions. It's not true. There was a queen with the title of Candace or Kandake. And to give you an element of history, you remember the Emperor, uh, uh, Emperor Augustus, Emperor of course, of Roman Emperor. He had conquered Egypt and he wanted to conquer Ethiopia as well. And you know what happened? It was one Kandake, one Kandas by the name Amani Shaketo. That Amani Shaketo who led the troops, the Ethiopian troops, to go and fight against the Roman soldiers. And that Amani Shaketo was known as a strong woman. Fat, very strong, and she had one eye. The Romans uh, wrote it. She was the one who led the soldiers. Sounds familiar. Eh? In Africa, sometimes we hear that there are some presidents who go to the battlefield and eh? in the front. I don't know. Maybe it can remind you of somebody or some people. That the president going to the battlefield and people think that's extraordinary. But now we are being told that even before the Christian era began, there was a woman, Amani Shaketu. She led the Ethiopian troops who went fight the Romans. And the Romans could not conquer Ethiopia. They had to sign a peace treaty. It is there in history. Now, another Kandake was the one whose minister of finance, so to say, went on pilgrimage. You see, very positive view of Africa. Africa was not a closed continent. It was an open continent. And Judaism had already penetrated in Africa before Christianity. Just like Judaism had penetrated in other parts of Asia and in Europe. So now we have the clear sign that Judaism had penetrated in Africa. Because this man, he was a rich man. Number two, he was someone who was fearing God, was believing in God. He had gone on pilgrimage, not to go to meet uh, just uh, uh, the, 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 the people in Israel or on tourism, no. He went on pilgrimage to Jerusalem and he went on his way back. And one thing also with this man is that that man was well educated. Rich, because it is not given to anybody to have uh, the, the, the text, the scroll of the word of God and his condition is described, but also educated. He was reading a passage from Isaiah and as the customs was at that time, he was reading aloud. People were reading aloud. So he was reading most probably the text in Greek, in the Greek language. So he's reading loud. So this man was educated. An African was, was educated. Again, you see that this uh, miserable view of Africans is not there. The man was reading Isaiah. And what is also striking with this man? It is his humility. This unknown person, looking differently, let's say racially from him, comes closer to him, and as he hears him reading, Isaiah is asking a question. Do you understand what you are reading? He's not looking down on him. So who are you? Do you know who I am? No, 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 no. He say, oh, how can I understand if there is no one who guides me. And then what did he do? He asked Philip to join him on his chariot. Today we might say, okay, he opened the door of his Mercedes Benz or Rolls Royce or in a private jet, he took him there or whatever. He said, come. And then Philip sat next to him. And then he started explaining to him the meaning of the passage he was reading and from that passage leading him to they are now uh, to, the, to the good news of salvation in Christ Jesus. So, this is another world. This is the revolution. Christ has brought the revolution of love. And as the man hears about Jesus and about uh, baptism for 
repentance for salvation. He is the one who makes the request. Hear his word. What prevents me from being baptized? Believe in the Lord Jesus. He believed and was baptized. And at the end, the towards the end of the story, he said, he went on his way rejoicing. He was very happy. So try to imagine when this Ethiopian eunuch met the Kandake, the Kandas, the Queen of Ethiopia, giving him the feedback of what has happened to him while he was coming back, while he was on his way back from Jerusalem. It will have certainly brought a lot of rejoicing in Meroe, a lot of rejoicing in Ethiopia, and this is a great joy for us Africans. Dear friends, so we should be happy that as Africans, the good news has come to us. But also because we are in a continent with so many problems, we have also, I think, a very good reading for our leaders. You see, this man was rich, but he was also spiritual. He was also longing for something deeper beyond this world. And at the same time, he was humble. He allowed himself to be evangelized. So we need leaders like this. Huh? We have a lot of ministers. We have a lot of uh, people in authority. So then we have a lot of rich people who have money. But they should also learn that man shall not live by bread alone. That money is not the solution. It can help, but it's not the solution. It can be a solution to some problems, but the solution is God. The solution is Christ Jesus. So we need to see in our ministers, our presidents, our leaders in government, we need to have people like this Ethiopia. Yes, I have a statue. Yes, I am a learned man. I've learned. I'm a well-educated. But I long for God. And I allow the church, through her ministers, to lead me to the fuller knowledge of Christ. Let us pray for our leaders. Let us pray that we'll have more and more people like this Ethiopian in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, so that the, the conversion to Christ will bring great rejoicing to Africa. There is too much crying. There is too much weeping. Now what we need is great rejoicing. Let us pray for people who become channels of that joy. That's eschatological joy. That joy of the resurrection. That joy brought by Jesus Christ. And that joy will, will now be the agenda. Joy will become reality in Africa because we will have had evangelized leaders, evangelized uh, president, kings, evangelized head of states and of government, evangelized leaders of people. Let us ask the Holy Spirit really to give us these leaders who will bring great rejoicing to Africa.